This week on Glass Break, Walter Liebelman will narrate as local Seattle-based artist Paul Cunningham works in our hot shop. Last time Paul did a residency with Mog was way back in 2013. We were fortunate to have him come in for a day as a featured artist in 2018 to work on one of his signature pieces. Walt can tell you a little more about his background and the techniques we'll see. Take it away, Walt. Today you'll see the artist Paul Cunningham make one of his Encalmo pieces. Paul began his career in 1986. Since then, he has worked with such great artists as Dale Chihuly, Lino Talia Pietra, and Dante Marioni. In this video, he will use the Encalmo technique. Encalmo is the joining of hollow forms to create distinct bands of color or design. Paul has blown a bubble of clear glass. Dante brings some colored glass to Paul, and Paul's going to coat that clear bubble with the colored glass. We're doing the same process here with Yanush and Darren. Blow a bubble of clear and coat it with colored glass. coating a third bubble. Each time we coat one of these, it's called a color overlay. Yanush has made a long tube of colored glass. We're going to cut that tube into sections and we'll use the, the sections to assemble the final piece. Darren has made a similar tube but of a different color. You can see him now sectioning off our individual Encalmo cup. That's what we call these little pieces. We'll assemble a bunch of them, that will make the final piece. Now Paul has made the collar, which will hold all these individual pieces. Janusz is cutting off one of our little Encalmo cups. We'll cut it off onto the paddle. And then Dante will come over with a punty and pick up the Encalmo cup. There he goes, he grabs it. Paul takes the Encalmo cup and joins it to the collar. Break it off. We're going to repeat that process a number of times, and each of those Encalmo cups will become a band of color in the final piece. Paul prepares the opening to accept the next cup. comes the next cup. Break it off. Yeah. These little hole, and we'll spread that hole out and that will accommodate the next cup. Alright. Here comes Trent with the next cup. Messed up. 
So one by one, we're building the stripes of the finished piece. This one is the final piece. Nope. <laughs> Get another one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now we have all the pieces put together. Paul shapes the glass using the block. And now he's going to coat that striped bubble with a layer of clear molten glass. Each time we dip it in and coat it, it's called taking a gather. G-A-T-H-E-R. We'll drip some excess off into that steel can. The excess will be saved and eventually go back in the front. Take the pipe over to the pipe cooler, that T-shaped trough, and we can spray water on the metal pipe that cools it down and makes it easier to hold. comes over with the block and he's going to do a little shaping. A block is a tool which is made out of wood and it's kept wet as long as the tool is wet. It doesn't burn too much and it doesn't leave any marks as he shapes the glass. Now we're getting ready to blow it up to its full size and shape. The man doing the blowing is Trent seated to the right of the workbench. Paul is shaping the glass as Trent blows. He's taking the jacks, his metal tongs, and making a sharp crease. That crease will be where he can break the glass away from the metal pipe. pad in Paul's hand is just folded up wet newspaper. As long as it's wet, he can shape the hot glass without leaving any marks. It's always important to keep the glass at the very top and near the pipe warm. As long as that stays warm, it won't crack. If let it get too cold, the glass near the pipe can crack and the whole thing will fall on the floor and smash. Darren's getting that glass really hot and soft. The longer he stays in the glory hole, the softer it becomes. Trent scoots around, getting ready to blow some more. And it's just like blowing up a balloon. It requires some pressure, but not excessive pressure.
Now we're getting ready to squeeze the bubble and make it into more of a flattened disc shape. Paul has two cork pads in his hand. He's going to use those to press and squeeze and make it into more of a disc rather than a sphere. The cork allows us to press on the glass without leaving it anymore. making a flattened shape like this, we can't do the whole thing all at once. We have to coax it little by little. You'll notice each time we stop to flatten it, the glass begins to sag. So we flip it 180 and let it sag back in the other direction. flatten it, you can see it becomes slightly concave. So, after we flatten it, we'll give it a little puff, and that'll round it out again. So one of the glass blowers is seated to the left of the bench, you can't always see him, and he's blowing into the pipe on Paul's command. And we're making sure that glass near the pipe stays warm. When we spin the glass at the bench like that, the centrifugal force stretches it out. So now it's becoming wider. Right, it's much wider than when we started. We're heating up the bottom, soften that, and then we flatten the glass on the bottom. Paul has a graphite paddle. I press it against the bottom to make the bottom flat. The next part of the process is to transfer the glass from the rod it was originally blown on to a second steel rod called the punty. The second steel rod will hold it, the piece from the bottom while we shape the top. Here comes Janusz with the punty. Hot glass sticks to hot glass. We press the two together, they'll be stuck. Blow the layer on the punty to stiffen it. We'll take some tweezers, dip them in water, drip some water where we want it to break, and a tap, and off it comes. So now the piece is held from the bottom, the top is exposed, the top can now be shaped. Paul's going to trim off a little bit of the thick glass at the very top, make a little notch, and then we'll bust off that little cup shape at the top. We're going to blow a little air into the front end, and that hot part, the glowing part, will expand a little bit. We'll squeeze a little with the block so it blends in more with the rest of the shape. We're just about done now. The reason I know that is I look at one of the glass blowers. They put on a Kevlar suit, the silver suit and they're going to carry the finished piece to the annealing oven where it will be cooled slowly overnight.